Hi, and welcome back to uh, what I call Bible on Audio, where I read it aloud and you follow along. And we're just reading the Bible. We're not, I'm not a pastor. I haven't been to seminary school. I just claim that I'm Christian, non-denominational, so I have no religion. Um, and I'm just here wanting to read and hoping that others will join me. And we just grow closer to God and our relationship with him and a little bit wiser as we open the book that is free to us here in the States and not always around the world. Um, this is a good one. This is Ezekiel uh, 33 and it's called The Watchman and His Messages. And with everything going on in the world, with all of this new spiritual or spirit, I'm spiritual, new age, all of this uh, talk of the stars and the planets and aliens and everybody wants to uh, talk about 3D dimension, 5D dimension. Well, this is as clear as it can be written and I just want to read it and then I'll comment when I feel moved <laughs> and hopefully you guys forgive me for my excitement, but it is really a good one. If I had to explain what it is to that God caused sin or the sinner um, and what it is to ask for repentance, here it is. Okay, um, so the watchman and his message, chapter 33. Again, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, now son of man is Ezekiel the prophet. Speak to the children of your people and say to them, When I bring the sword upon a land and the people of the land take a man from their territory and make him their watchman, when he sees the sword coming upon the land, if he blows the trumpet and warns the people, then whoever hears the sound of the trumpet and does not take warning, if the sword comes and takes him away, his blood shall be on his own head. His blood shall be on his own head. His death be his own fault because he didn't answer the, the, the warning. He heard the trumpet sound and he didn't take heed to the warning. Um, he heard the sound of the trumpet, but did not take the warning. His, I just said that. <laughs> Silly, huh? Let me calm down for you guys. Because for me, it might be easy, but for others struggling, this is not an easy thing. I know that. So, okay. But if the watchman sees the sword coming and does not blow the trumpet, and the people are not warned, and the sword comes and takes away person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity. But the blood I will require at the watchman's hand. The watchman is the is the prophet, the man of God, the pastor, the minister, the rabbi. He who has a flock to warn. He who has a flock to lead. If he doesn't sound the trumpet, if he doesn't give the warning for the people to answer the warning and take heed, then the, the guilt falls on his hand is what God is saying. So you, son of man, I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel. Therefore, you shall hear the word from my mouth and warn them for me. This is all people of God. We're, we're charged with the task, with the task. I went running today, so, or walking slash. Um, the guilt is on their hands. The blame is on them because they didn't lead the people as they should. Chapter 8. When I say to the wicked, O wicked man, you shall surely die, and you, do, and you do not speak to warn the wicked from his way, that wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood I will require at your hand. Nevertheless, if you warn the wicked to turn from his way, and he does not turn away from his way, he shall die in his iniquity, but you have delivered your soul. So the shepherd, uh, so then the watchman, what he's calling them, the, the man of God, man or woman of God, they can say that they did their job, they shared the word, they testified, they um, ministered to the people, and they chose not to turn from their ways, and so then the fault is their own, okay? Um, therefore you, I'm on verse 10, therefore you, son of man, say to the house of Israel, thus you say, if our transgressions and our sins lie upon us and we pine away in them, how can we live? How can we then live? Say to them, when the people have this question, as I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn away from his way and live. Turn, turn from your evil ways. For why should you die, O house of Israel? Why should you die, O daughter or son? Why should you die in your sin? Turn away from your sin. The fairness of God's judgment, verse 12. Therefore you, O son of man, say to the children of your people, the righteousness of the righteous man shall not deliver him in the day of his transgression as for the wickedness of the wicked. He shall not fall because of it in the day that he turns from his wickedness, nor shall the righteous be able to live because of his righteousness in the day that he sins. 
When I say to the righteous that he shall surely live, but he trusts in his own righteousness and commits iniquity, none of his righteous works shall be remembered, but because of the iniquity that he has committed, he shall die. So it doesn't matter how much I read the Bible, how much I testify and try to tell people about God. If I am living in sin and I choose to do evil things, if I choose to be out there promiscuous, ha um, stealing, uh, being just full of sin and, and breaking the commandments, then all of these good deeds are for nothing. It's not your good deeds, which we, which we, which we have heard in the church before. It's not your good deeds that will gain you a place in heaven, but it is the salvation of God and his forgiveness that will allow you in. He says it right here, that it is not your righteous works. If you're living in sin, you're living in sin and you're guilty. <clears throat> 14. Again, when I say to the wicked, you shall surely die. If he turns from his sin and does what is lawful and right. If the wicked restores the pledge, which the pledge gives back what he has stolen and walks in the statutes of life without committing iniquity, he shall surely live. He shall not die. See, he's saying if he turns away, if he puts down whatever it is he's doing, that he has been doing, that isn't pleasing to God, then he, he or she shall surely live. <clears throat> 17. Yet the children of your people say, the way of the Lord is not fair, but it is their way which is not fair. When the righteous turns from his righteousness and commits iniquity, he shall die because of it. But when the wicked turns from his wickedness and does what is lawful and right, he shall live because of it. Yet you say that the way of the Lord is not fair. O house of Israel, I will judge every one of you according to his own ways. Although we say God is not fair, God is not just, why does he cause disease? Why does he ca cause us to suffer? It isn't he that is unfair. It is us who have lived a certain way as people, as civilization, that we have deteriorated generation to generation. It gets worse as the generations um, come to living um, and they forget their ways. They, they forget the commandments and the statutes of the Lord to keep. So it isn't God that is unfair, but the people. Let me finish. My son's coming in. So the fall of Jerusalem. And it came to pass in the 12th year of our captivity in the 10th month on the fifth day of the month that one who had escaped from Jerusalem came to me and said, the city has been captured. Now the hand of the Lord has been upon me the evening before the man came who had escaped and he had opened my mouth. So when he came to me in the morning, my mouth was open and I was no longer mute the cause of Judah's, Judah's reign. I'm so sorry. Verse 23, the cause of Judah's ruin. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, they who inhabit those ruins in the land of Israel are saying, Abraham was only one man, and he inherited the land. But we are many. The land has been given to us as possession. Therefore say to them, Thus says the Lord God, You eat meat with blood, you lift up your eyes towards your idols, and shed blood. Should you then possess the land? You rely on your sword, you commit abominations, and you defile one another's wives. Should you then possess the land? Say thus to them, Thus says the Lord God, As I live, surely those who are in the ruins shall fall by the sword, and one who is in the open field I will give to the beast to be devoured, and those who are in the strongholds and caves shall die of the pestilence, for I will make the land most desolate. Her arrogant strength shall cease, and the mountains of Israel shall be desolate, that no one will pass through. Then they shall know that I am the Lord when I have made the land most desolate because of all their abominations which they have committed. The end, the judgment time. Hearing and not doing, verse 30. As for you, son of man, the children of your people are talking about you beside the walls and in the doors of the houses, and they speak to one another, everyone saying to his brother, please come and hear the word is that comes from the Lord. So they come can to you. And I'm almost done in the next uh, verses, and then you can drive. Verse 31. So they come to you as the people do. They sit before you as many people, and they hear your words, but they do not do them. For with their mouth they show much love, but their hearts pursue their own gain. Indeed, you are to them as a very lovely song of one who has a pleasant voice and can play well on an instrument, for they hear your words, but they do not do them. And when this comes to pass, surely it will come. Then they will know that a prophet has been among them. In that last uh, part of the chapter he's saying and, it, and it's true of me I go to church I feel good the worship songs are beautiful and I feel great leaving church but then I go back to my ways then it's just a sweet song that I didn't sweet song and sweet service that I didn't really take heed to to turn my life around that was chapter 33
I hope it was as good to you as it was to me and I hope I didn't do a disservice by reading it in a type of way that was unflattering as always take care of yourself god bless you bye